Dynamed.com, a leading authority in patient education, presents this video to help patients and their families better understand their medical condition and its management. Uh, I was having considerable trouble. My knees were collapsing on me. I fell down a flight of steps. I couldn't walk without the aid of a cane. I couldn't pick anything up. I was losing my late weightlifting capability and I had to reduce my activities tremendously. The term arthritis means inflammation of the joint. This term is actually used to describe a group of distinct diseases primarily affecting the joints of the body. Symptoms include pain, swelling, and stiffness of the joints and surrounding areas. Generally, the effects of arthritis are chronic, meaning that they will last for a long time, perhaps for a lifetime. Yet, there are many different treatments that can lessen the pain, increase range of motion, and even slow the progress of the disease. Let's examine the knee joint. The knee is a complicated structure made up of a combination of bones, muscles, tendons, ligaments, and other soft tissue. It supports the body weight and additional forces when walking, running, or during sports activities, providing both stability and balance. At the knee joint, the thigh bone or femur and shin bones, the tibia and fibula, meet end to end and are connected and controlled by a complex set of muscles and ligaments. The bones are protected by a layer of cartilage, which prevents them from rubbing against each other. Also, between the two bones lie two crescent-shaped pieces of cartilage called menisci. The menisci provide cushioning, as well as a smooth, lubricated surface for the bones to slide against during movement. They also provide a more pocket-like surface on the top of the tibia for the femur to sit in, providing additional stability. Two ligaments, the medial collateral and lateral collateral, run from the end of the femur to the top of the tibia along the inside, and the fibula on the outside edges of the knee. On the inner side of the knee, the ligament also attaches to the meniscus that lies between the bones, providing additional stability. These ligaments control side-to-side -side motion and keep the knee from collapsing. Another set of ligaments lie inside the joint between the bones, crossing each other. These crossed ligaments are called the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments. These provide front-to-back stability, keeping either bone from moving too far forward or backward. Finally, surrounding the ends of the tibia and femur is a thin layer of tissue called the synovium, which produces the synovial fluid that fills the joint. This fluid helps to keep the motion between the bones smooth and unrestricted. In a normal knee, all of these parts work together to provide stability and very controlled motion during activity. However, degenerative changes or injury to the knee can cause pain, discomfort, and lessen the quality of life. Different forms of arthritis, particularly osteoarthritis, can cause the cartilage that normally cushions the bones to wear down, leaving the bones rubbing together, causing pain. Rheumatoid arthritis is a disease that involves the immune system. In rheumatoid arthritis, the body's immune system mistakes the synovium that lines the inside of the joints for a foreign body and attacks it. The joints become inflamed, and often severe deformities can occur as the cartilage is destroyed. Traumatic arthritis, or secondary arthritis, affects the knee after traumatic events, like a fracture or ligament tear. Arthritic conditions can be controlled with conservative methods such as pain medications, weight management, and physical therapy. However, if these treatments are unsuccessful, total knee replacement may ultimately be recommended. And I went to uh, my general practice doctor there and uh, he x-rayed and said that I needed to see a, an orthopedic specialist. And I came to the orthopedic specialist and we reviewed my x-rays. Uh, he put me through a couple of examinations. I asked him what my options were and he said, you have no options left, you have no cartilage. Uh, your next uh, step is total knee replacement. In determining whether total knee surgery is a viable option, the surgeon will consider the degree to which the surgeon believes that a total knee replacement can improve the function of the knee, 
whether the age and physical condition make the patient a good candidate for successful surgery, and the likelihood that the joint will need to be replaced again at a later date based on age and activity level. In a total knee replacement, an incision is made across the knee joint. Once the joint is exposed, the ends of the femur and tibia are resurfaced, removing any diseased bone. The bone that was removed is replaced with a combination of metal and plastic components. The unique thing about the prosthesis is that while the typical prosthesis flexes and extends, that we've introduced a bearing here that also rotates much as the normal knee rotates. And this is highly congruent from the side and this fits very tightly. This substitutes for some of the ligaments that we have to remove because it has its own inherent stability. The other thing that we've seen with this type of design, which is the knee of the future, is extremely long wear. And you're young and that's very important. It's important to all of us that we not have to replace this again. So what you're getting will be the state of the art, the finest thing that we have, and it's called a mobile bearing knee. So not only does it rotate this way, but the patella that replaces your patella that goes against this, this also rotates just much, much as the normal patella does. When finished, the surgeon closes the knee with stitches or staples. In many patients, especially younger individuals, the attachment of implants to bone relies on a special porous metal into which the bone actually grows. This often eliminates the use of cement. Many surgeons, however, prefer the use of cement for additional early stability in most cases. Some of the ligaments that connect the bones together may need to be removed in order to implant the new prosthesis. If the ligaments must be sacrificed, a special type of prosthesis may be chosen which has grooves for the pieces to slide in. This feature provides additional stability in the absence of the ligaments. By replacing the ends of the bones, friction and associated pain are eliminated and the patient can regain a more normal activity level. The artificial joint or prosthesis will not provide a completely normal knee, but with up to 120 degrees of movement and reduced pain, it can significantly improve the quality of life. In a mobile bearing knee implant, such as this, the plastic that is used to replace the cartilage is able to rotate, allowing more movement. I woke up about four hours later after I came out of uh, the recovery ward and later that afternoon, uh, the physical therapist came in my room and said, let's walk. And uh, I was on a continuous motion machine at that time, which continually moves your leg so that it doesn't stiffen up on you. Uh, he brought a walker around and helped me out of the bed and I got up and walked to the door. Physical therapy consisted of uh, limbering up my leg. Uh, the first action that they had to take was I had lost the mapping of the muscles in my leg following the surgery and I couldn't move my kneecap. So they gave me electrical stimulation to redirect me to where my muscles were. As soon as I had that electrical stimulation, I was able to move my, start the muscles moving. And there was a process of strengthening those muscles and getting flexibility in my legs. And that, I went to physical therapy three times a day for about two hours for about six weeks, and it was extremely important. It was painful, but it was extremely important until they were able to get my knee to zero deflection, where it was straight, like it was before the, during the surgery, and then to bring my leg back under me uh, to about 115 degrees, which gave me good mobility. As with any surgical procedure, there are risks involved, which may include complications with anesthesia, including respiratory or cardiac malfunction, infection, if an infection develops in an artificial joint, it may have to be replaced or removed and the joint fused together. There is a risk of damage to nerves or blood vessels. The prosthesis may loosen from its attachment to bone. Abnormal or heavy wear may require replacement. A buildup of scar tissue may create stiffness, resulting in the knee not being able to bend. In this case, manipulation may be required under anesthesia. 
Each patient should carefully consider the risks along with the potential benefits of knee replacement surgery and weigh them carefully. A successful total knee replacement can mean a return to activity that the patient may have given up because of pain. If I were starting the procedure today and I knew about the operation that I know today having gone through it, I would do it immediately because it has been so successful in my case. And anyone else that is faced with the decision for knee replacement, I would encourage them to do it immediately because all they're doing is delaying recovery by delaying not having the surgery. And I really appreciate the surgery that I've had. For more information on mobile bearing knee replacement, contact your physician. Other Dynamed.com patient video programs are available by contacting the Dynamed.com website.